So, what did the man, the genius, the maestro create? It hasn't been on the cover of every single blog begging to fall in the favor of a few corporate giants a thousand times already. This, his grand finale, his swan song. I bought a watch, a modern watch, which is not something I do very often. And that was almost four months ago, and I have hardly taken it off my wrist since. From sunny Palm Beach to snowy Michigan, I haven't been able to find a single regret. And boy, have I looked. There are icons, sort of sacred shapes in the watch world. There aren't many, they're all quite possibly flawless, and most were designed by one man, Gerald Charles Genta. An undisputed genius, a visionary, a man who oozed perspective when most were out of stock. He was a lover of history, of the great artists that came before him. And not just in horology, but in architecture, jewelry, anything with truly intentional, bold, inspired form. While he's most famous for not just pioneering, but, I mean, inventing the luxury steel sports watch genre, he is much, much more than that. I think we all, down deep, want to submerge ourselves into the crafts we love, into this craft. I don't think that we want to get comfortable living on the tip of the iceberg. And that inquisitive nature is part of what makes this hobby so fascinating. Inspired by 17th century Roman Baroque architecture, Clou de Paris, architectural decoration he admired on the neoclassical buildings he saw throughout Paris. Mine, a perfect skeleton. Sandblasted bridges, polished with anglage and anthracite finishes. An absolute masterpiece. For years, the brand was limited to custom order, being only worn by top collectors, patrons of the horological art. Now produced in a collection, but of just 2,000 per year. It's amazing. It's pure and enthusiastic design, uninhibited design. It is divergent high horology. A push to think differently about what a watch can look like. The movements are produced in Fleurier, the dials in Chaux de Fonds, the cases in Geneva. This example just 8.35 millimeters thick. And I know the man himself is smiling down on these proportions. And for good reason, they're correct. They're refined, they're balanced, comfortable. So brass tacks, why did I buy this? For one, while generally speaking a dress watch guy, I understand and appreciate the beauty and utility of a comfortable sports watch. And further, I'm not impervious to the allure of a sports watch, which is traditionally a beater in everyday peace, being precious and complicated and finished like a piece of art. I am a sucker for that sort of oxymoron, and this oxymoron is best in class. And I swear I wasn't trying to be an insufferable hipster when I bought it, when I became an early adopter of a truly great and still relatively unsung brand. But, and it's a big but, it does make it all the better. I'm sort of proud of myself for seeing the obvious before everybody else. After many, of course, but before everyone. And I'll be careful here with this closing because the masses are good. They're good for the industry, they're good for the brands, they're good for the hobby. But they do, unfortunately, and without malice, have a nasty way of booting you off the line, don't they? Pricing you out of reach. Gerald Charles Genta was a genius. I've admired countless pole routers, owned my fair share of Royal Oaks, run my fingers around an ellipse or two. And these are his last words. This design, the maestro, is the last will of a man. A visionary, a leader. Now, whether or not you choose to listen, I suppose, is up to you.